Let's return for more of Gary and Drenda's favorites now on Fixing the Money Thing. When your heart can be trusted to beat for God's heart with his heart for his passion, you have qualified yourself for his treasure. Now, we all come out of the earth curse system where it's self-preservation is the name of the game. So God has to train us and teach us in life to be trusted. How does he do that? He does it through natural things. He trains us through our job, putting us under submission to people. And see how we handle that. We, begin, we have to submit. You know, marriage is nothing but dying to yourself. Working under an employer is dying to yourself. Mom's having babies. As you know, it's dying to yourself. You know, God's got to conform you to the ability to die to yourself and allow God's character and his passion to become your passion. So he's going to train you how to die to yourself in other places before he can trust you to die to yourself in the midst of a conflict. Oh, I know. It's exciting stuff. It is exciting stuff because in the end, they always get the girl and the guy or whatever and the money and the, you know, all the stuff. So hang on. The story's not finished. Do you qualify for God's secret money? Oh, and a prosper pastor. Fantastic. Wonderful. So glad. But you know, there's what, things you have to do, things you have to do to prosper. So Isaiah chapter 45, verse 3, God says, I will give you the treasures of darkness, riches stored in secret places. I love Matthew 22, 14, for many are called, but few are chosen. Are you chosen? Can God trust you with his heart, his assignment? Can he trust you to be Wading into a situation where there's temptation. You could be tempted to fall into adultery or to worship money or whatever it is. Can he trust you in the midst of that thing that you'll not bend and bow and change, but you will stay steadfast? A deacon must first be tested. If nothing found against him, let him serve. The test always comes first. Amen. Exodus chapter 13, verse 17. Exodus chapter 13, verse 17. When Pharaoh let the people go, speaking of Israel coming out of Egypt, God did not lead them on the road through the Philistine country, though that was the shorter route. For God said if they face war, they might change their minds and return to Egypt. So God led the people around, say, the long way. I know you don't want to hear that one, do you? The long way by the desert where there's nothing. The long way and the nothing way. There's just the cloud and the fire. Just you and God. We call that the wilderness Toward the Red Sea, towards an impossible training situation. So notice, it goes on and says this. The Israelites went up out of Egypt armed for battle. They were all dressed up for battle, but they didn't have anywhere to go. They didn't have a clue. It's funny, isn't it? Kind of, these guys were slaves. They're dressed in battle attire. They must have got from the Egyptians, I suppose. And they're heading out to capture the promise of God that God gave them. I'm leading you to a land flowing with milk and honey. Yay, praise God. Pastor talks about prosperity. That's awesome stuff. <laughs> they get all dressed up, but they don't have a clue. They've never been in battle before. They're going to face walled cities, people the size of Goliath, chariots by the hundreds. They don't have a clue. So God, even though they have the promise, they've been delivered they're not ready. So God takes them on the long route to prepare them. I'm speaking to some of you guys right now. I know that. You're on that long route right now. And you've gotten a little fed up about it because you don't understand it. You don't have to understand it. That's part of the test. See, being under submission and authority means you don't have to understand it. You simply submit to what God says. So they're taking the long way around thinking they're going to see a land flowing with milk and honey, and they see desert, nothing. It's going to challenge everything they thought was going to happen. But God is still leading them. Amen? 
He's leading them. He's training them. He's got to train them. And so they've never been at war before. So God leads them to a training situation. Now, God leads you to training situations that are not part of your destiny. For instance, their destiny was to confront the Canaanites, the walled cities, the giants, and take the territory. They weren't ready for that. But they were ready for a training experience. God takes you someplace that's not part of your destiny, not part of where you thought you were going, to the Red Sea, Militarily, that was a setup. That's a bad move. They're now hemmed in by mountains. There's no way out of that. They're just the sea. They can't even cross it to get to their promise. It looks now impossible for you to get to your promise. Why am I working down here at McDonald's? I mean, I thought I was supposed to. What am I? There's no way I can go from here to there. Stop grumbling. Stop complaining. God knows where you're at. Just relax. The one that called is able to lead and get you where you're supposed to be, all right? Just relax. Amen. Do you understand what I'm saying? He leads you someplace that if you fail, it will not mess up your destiny. You're going to fail. You're going to make mistakes. He's going to lead you some, to some places where you're going to stumble, you're going to fall, you're going to have to be corrected, you're going to have to choose to continue to move on, you're going to have to submit, and it's not part of your ultimate occupational place where you're going to be called to occupy. It's at the Red Sea where God's going to demonstrate himself. He's going to teach you he's faithful. He's going to teach you that you can do the impossible. He's going to train you to trust him. God doesn't reveal to you where to serve or where your assignment is until you're tested. And because it's a test, he doesn't reveal what you're even being tested about. As I said, you're tested in an isolated place that's distant from your occupation that you'll have your ability or your destiny it's in your ability to be submitted. It's in your ability to be faithful, to get up on time, to go to work, to earn money, to be faithful in someone else's occupation, someone else's business, to be tested so you can be faithful under God's direction. See, sometimes you gotta face things that don't make any sense. God's gotta train you to face things that don't make any sense. He's gotta prepare you to be trustworthy. Hi, I'm Gary Cassie, and you will never fulfill your destiny until you fix your money thing. Visit GaryCassie.com, and don't forget to hit the subscribe button below for more amazing weekly videos on fixing your money thing, and thanks for watching.